reasons that we have figured out why demand is a downward sloping function because availability of alternatives and and, marginal and diminishing, diminishing marginal value two reasons. So, let us talk about just a little bit of digression because I want to talk about I want to define availability of alternatives. this term alternatives. I want to introduce two terminologies substitutes and complements. Okay? Two terms. What is a substitute? Let us say, let me write it, good x is a substitute of good y if if everything else is equal and increase in price of y causes a consumer to buy more of good x. Okay? So, good x is a substitute of good y if everything else is equal ceteris paribus whatever we are talking about is ceteris paribus. So, let us ignore this clause okay? just to you know just to read it clearly good x is a substitute of good y if an increase in price of y causes a consumer to buy more of good x. Can you think of a such scenario? Coffee to tea. No. Coffee to tea. No. No? Think about it again. Coffee to tea. Yes? Let us say, let us take an example. Tea and coffee. Let us say at present price of coffee is 5 rupees. Okay? Price of coffee is 5 rupees and price of tea is 4 rupees. By the way, this is the amount you pay when you travel in train for a cup of coffee and a cup of tea. Now, we do not know the test of a particular individual, but let us say that at present he is buying, he is buying coffee. Okay? He is not going for tea, he is buying a cup of coffee by paying 5 rupees. Okay? Now, let us say the price of coffee increases from 5 to 6, it is possibility, it is a possibility that he would still, he would still buy coffee, 5 to 7, 5 to 8, 5 to 9, there will be a one point when he would shift from coffee to tea, tea unless he hates tea completely. Okay? But we are talking about a generic person, we are not taking a very individual kind of a person, very That's generic true. person. So, what is happening? that increase in price of coffee causes the consumer to buy more of good x. Good x is here t. So, the consumption of t goes up because price of coffee has increased. Okay? So, coffee and tea are substitute. Another close substitutes are Pepsi and Coke. Pepsi and Coke. Okay? They are close substitute. They are let us say if they are priced equally maybe some of us like Coke more, some of us like Pepsi more. When typically when there is another reason economic reason would explain why they are priced you know equally always in the market, but that is for some other topic not today. Okay? So, but if let us imagine when Coke and Pepsi are not available for the same price, the relative price their relative price will affect your buying decision. And if price of Coke goes up, definitely on average sale of Pepsi would increase. It means more and more people would consume Pepsi. So, Coke and Pepsi are substitute. Similarly, let me erase this. Similarly, we can define complements. What we have to do, everything would remain the same that let us change it. Let me change it here. 
good x is a complement of good y if everything else is equal and an increase in price of y causes a consumer to buy less of good x that is the only difference less of good x. Now, can you give me an example of complement an example where two goods are complements bread and butter bread and butter. If price of butter goes up, most of us do not take bread alone, we always you know most of us put butter on our bread slices. So, if price of butter goes up, our consumption of not only butter, but also of bread would go down. So, that is why bread and butter are complements. Okay? We will study these things in more detail. Okay? Coming back to the demand function. So, what we have learned the q is a function of price. Let us say put here banana, it does not matter, B can be C, D, anything. Okay. Okay. This is just a recap that what we have learned that P B goes up, Q B D comes down. But we have also learned just now that Q B D is not just the function of its own price, but it is function of the price of complements and substitute. And if I remember, you were saying that income also affects the buying decision. So, if you want to describe Q B quantity demanded of banana is not only a function of price of banana, but also it is a function of Income. many other variables. So, again I am no again I am writing without knowing with certainty just for illustration purpose that quantity demanded is a function of price of banana, price of guava, okay? price of milk if you like banana with milk. Okay. And it may not depend, one has to collect data. Okay. That is why in the earlier class I emphasized the role of data. We cannot say right now this is just a theoretical construct that I am saying that the quantity demanded of banana depends on the price of banana, price of guava, price of milk and probably your income and some other factors let us say f just you know. But this is a theoretical construct to really know about the demand function one will have to collect data and analyze that what are the factors influencing your buying decision for banana. Okay? It is possible that price of milk may not affect the your banana buying decision, but this is just a theoretical construct. Okay? So, if I write let me just write one one such theoretical construct and I want you to figure out by looking at the equation whether banana and guava are complement or substitute and let us say it does not depend on income and factor other factors just three or I can say yeah just leave the income out does not matter. So, what do you think? Substitutes. Substitutes. Substitutes? How about you? Yeah. We cannot say there are three possibility there are three different answers you can give one that they are complement yes. they are substitutes Not and third we cannot figure out looking at the equation. Substitutes, why? Sir, because Sorry. as the price is of guava, guava is increasing, hmm. it is increasing the demand, demand. for banana. Yes, sir. So okay. So that's why we. This is just by definition, guava and <coughs> banana are substitutes. So if but if let's say if instead of plus, if we had it as minus, 
then complement. complement. Then they would be complement. But let's stick to the plus sign for time being. Now remember, when I started talking about the quantity demanded of banana, what we said that we would vary the price of banana and we would see its impact on the quantity demanded of banana. We said everything else would be fixed or held constant. So let us say for example, we held price of guava constant at 2. Okay? It means what we are talking about is demand function is 15 minus 0 0.25 P B plus 0 0.5 multiplied by 2 or in other word we are talking about 16 minus this is the demand function we are talking about. Can you draw the demand function? Try to draw. Again when we draw the demand function what we will have? We will have quantity of banana on x axis, price of banana on y axis. Remember, we are taking the price of guava fixed. We are taking price of guava fixed. So, how can we draw? Here, if you pay attention and if you know little bit of coordinate geometry, this is an equation of a straight line. Okay? So, when you know it is an equation of a straight line, you have to figure out two points on this line and then just joining them would give you the graph. But if you do not know, if you do not know that this is the equation of a straight line, what you need to do is to draw a table and what you can have here is, here you can have P B, here you can have Q B. So, when let us say, let us do it just an exercise. Let us say when price of banana is 0, how many of, how many bananas do you demand in the market? 16. When you have, let us say, let us do it in, no, we cannot draw the infinite point. Let us just do 3 points. When price of banana is 4, how many units will you demand? 15. And when similarly, if you have, let us say, 64, how many units will you demand? Zero. Zero. And similarly, you can you should draw a bigger table with more numbers if you want to be more precise about your graph. So, how would it look like? Let us say P B is equal to 0, P B is 0 on this line. Okay. So, here we get as 16 and when it is 4, it is 15 and when it is 64, we can match like this, here it is 64. Okay? Fine? Remember, that is how we get the demand function or the graph of the demand function. Now, what I want you to do, continue with the same equation, it was 15 minus 0 0.25 q b plus 0 0.5 p g. This was the equation we have used and we started with p g equal to 2. But now what I am saying, let us say that the price of guava has changed from 2 to 4, 2 to 4. What we will get, now let us write it what we get here 15 minus 0 0.25 q b plus 2 and here we get 17 minus 0 0.25 q b. Remember earlier this number was 16. So, this number has changed. So, what we get is a new demand function. It is not the same demand function, we get the new demand function and similarly you can draw a table if you draw, remember this is what we had earlier 16, here we had 64, this is P B, this is Q B. If you draw this, what you will get here 17 and here 
68. 68. So, what did we observe? We observed a shift in the demand function. We observed a shift in the demand function. Why did we observe this shift in the demand function? Because price of guava changed in the market. Now, let us understand the difference between movement along the line, movement along the curve and shift, shift of the curve. These two are two different things. When the price of banana changes, while everything else is fixed, everything else is held constant, then what do we get? We move along the curve, like price of banana is changing from 0 to 64, we move along this curve. But when price of guava changes, when price of guava changes, then we get a shift of the demand curve. So, it is very, very important to understand the difference between movement along the curve and shift of the curve. When we are talking about a demand function, we are talking about all other things are held constant and we are talking about a relationship with, between price of a good and the quantity demanded of that good. If price of that good changes, of course, quantity demanded would change in most of the cases and what we will observe is movement along the curve, but if it is the price, if the price of not the good that we are talking about changes, then we are moving out of this construct that all other things are held constant. We are changing some of those things and then we do not get movement along the curve, we get shift of that curve. We obtain a completely new demand function. Okay, fine? Okay.